Hey, Charlene. Oh. You came down. Can you see? Yeah. Oh, I got the soft here. You know, I printed that earlier. Hey, Charlene, can you hear us? If it isn't this too, it is a song. It's perfect. I printed that earlier. You didn't know I was in my car. Um, I'm going to up for this one. No, okay. What you eating, Charlie? You're muted. You're muted, Charlie. Got it. You got live on Facebook? I can't uh, figure out. Happy. It's not giving me It's but I think it's because I had this set up. This is my own personal, but it still should let me. I'm just not seeing the or recording it. Go over to the video there. And this is the special one to go over to this, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize, I forgot. I'm not now. Parts down on what it is, you know. I'm all upset. Hang on, three. That's a problem, too. When they change something? No, it's because. Um, well, when we originally set it up, I had to create the Zoom link, I think. So it's on my Zoom account. Everybody well, else on your account. Account. That's all I ever use. I know, but like when, when we had to actually set this up, it had to be under. I've used my Zoom to create it. Like you this Zoom link was created by me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I couldn't find a Zoom link online. Well, it's on Platinum Calendar. Uh oh. -uh. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm loving it. Yes, it is. Seat. I just was there. Well, then you didn't see it. It's on Platinum Calendar. Look, this is literally where I just got it from. Platinum Calendar. ALC meeting to discuss. I don't know why it says 2 to 2.30, but yeah. ALC meeting to discuss via Zoom right there. Mm -hmm. And it's on Facebook. And it got sent out via that email on Friday. Tim, why are you trying to get them? Just doing the same, making sure I have to follow it through for I know uh, Jackie's in Orlando. I'm going to take it. Hey, Marta. All right, we're going to get started right at two. How are you? How are you doing today? Yeah, how's it going? We can sit in though, right? We can sit in. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 Uh-hu
Hey, right, well, Jack, he used to bust me all the time. You know, if I sit in the back out of camera range, like him. I'm in my comfy clothes. <laughs> It's two o'clock. We're going to get started. <laughs> Hey, Jane. How are you? Charlene, can you see and hear us? You're in the north. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, if we can take out the note takers or not, whatever. Anyone, next time anyone tries to log on with that, just um, take them out. All right. Well, before we get into this, let's start off. Uh, I do want to be respectful of y'all's time, so we're getting started um, as, as, as close to on time as we possibly can. Um, I would imagine that the rest of us will be flowing and the rest of our ALC will be flowing. I believe we're actually just missing Edie, aren't we? Yeah. Um, let's get started off with some gratitude. Marcia, you want to start us off? Um, I'm just grateful to be here today. Um, grateful for the support of the agents here at the office. Wendy? Um, I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to touch um, my tight network and my heroes this weekend and do an event with them. So that, I'm very grateful that they showed up. Freedom. I'm grateful that Jackson challenged me to do a lead gym when he asked me five good leads out of this morning. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm grateful for an early spring market, man. We are going crazy and uh I'm, I'm also grateful for the opportunity to be involved with the pc program and really help step that up and and see what we can do with that and then finally i'm grateful that we're actually addressing uh what we're addressing today because it, it kind of serves more to to show what the acl can do and what we do for the aids other than you know the general stuff you know like events and things like that so it's nice to have some business business, even even though it might not be pleasant business, it's still business that we have to address. Absolutely. Absolutely. Charlene? Uh, I'll make sure. Are you, is she muted? Jackie, can you say a word? She's muted. Charlene, yeah, you're muted. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Jackie. Huh? No, that's Charlene. She's unmuted. Do you want Jackie? No, we were testing the mic. They should both be able to unmute themselves. I'm unmuted. Yeah, I'm here too. So, well, what are you grateful for? Me? Yeah. Um, the sunshine this weekend and um, very successful open houses. Um, I picked up a lot of buyers this weekend at our open houses, so. Thankful for that. Jackie? I am thankful to be able to spend a few days away and catch my breath again and spend some time with my grandparents in Florida. Edie, what are you grateful for? Uh, I held the deal together today, so I'm really grateful for that. Yeah. Nice. Well, um, thank you all for, for coming in. Um, if you don't mind, I say we get right into the meat of the discussion because I think this will be this will will take our entire meeting most likely. And I want to be respectful of y'all's time. Um, so does anyone against just going right into it? 
right. Um, so first, I just want to uh, I just want to recap what we've talked about both at the team meeting via emails, via Facebook, everything that has gone out. Um, we are, of course, of course, here to discuss uh, the proposed increase or potential increase of our monthly fee. Um, so what we went over, and I know everyone, uh, whether, whether it was posted on Facebook, whether we have a printout of it now, whether it was sent out via email, uh, or whether you saw it at the team meeting, um, everyone has uh, an idea of what our fee looks like right now. Um, so as of right now, we have a $98.50 monthly fee for every agent. Um, and if you're looking at one of these sheets right here, uh, once again, that has been posted everywhere that everyone has access to, um, we know that uh, that is $45 for the Keller Williams tech stack. Uh, we see what all that includes. That's the website, personalized app, the CRM, everything that command includes, including um, things not in command. Uh, KW Connect, the app, all of those things. Um, there is also ENO insurance that is built into that. Uh, there is a training fee, uh, and then we have a local tech fee, and then there's a three dollar and fifty cent credit card fee. Does anyone have any questions before we go into what the proposed one is as to what goes into uh, this current fee? Uh, and we'll we'll dive into a little bit. I've also printed out for everyone here, and I know um, all of the ALC has received um, feedback from several agents. We've uh, we've gone over at least. Uh, I know I sent out an email to all of our ALC and sent a video to all of you on Friday, um, just a little bit about what we'd be discussing. Um, so we'll talk more about that. But the potential monthly fee. Um, so what we're seeing is uh, Keller Williams as a whole has built this technology for us. Um, they have built the CRM, they've built us everything that we see in command, the app and the website. And for the longest time, they charged us $25 for that. Uh, last year, they increased that to $45 per agent per month that they would be charging. Um, what they are doing, no matter what we vote on here today, Keller Williams is going to raise the cost that they charge this market center, every market center, for the tech stack per agent per month. So that $45 that we saw in the last one is now going up to $65 per agent per month. Um, now, a lot of things have changed within command. Uh, in my opinion, a lot of things have grown. There have been a lot of new uh, features. Uh, and we, we talk about some of these here in this slide, again, I, uh, that's been shared with everyone. Um, the newer website, the personalized app, newer smart plans, the referral platform. Uh, I think one of the big things is that you own your own data with command, um, not Zillow, not any other third party company. If you were to leave Keller Williams, your data goes with you and it does not go anywhere else. Um, and then of course that, ups our fee with no other changes that ups our fee by $20. So if we were to just accept Keller Williams, okay, you're upping it by $20. So we up our fee by $20 as well. Um, it goes up to $118.50. That is, of course, leaving the ENO insurance, leaving the training fee, leaving a tech fee of $5, and the credit card fee of $3.50. Any questions? around that. Any questions about what we are looking at as in terms of it going up, why it would be going up, um, what the differences are? Any members of the ALT? Well then, um, barring me just going through and reading out some of the emails, some of the ideas that we've had, I want to now open up the discussion to our entire ALC. Uh, about what y'all's thoughts are. Of course, we are we're looking at a potential twenty dollar increase. Um, that doesn't have to happen. I know we've discussed a lot of different options. I want to hear what y'all's feedback has been, what you've heard from other agents, and then let's discuss it. The main feedback I've gotten is that they would like to see an a la carte menu, um, and that's only from three agents. So when I say main, that's pretty much all I've heard from. And those three were like, well, it'd be nice to have the a la carte because they didn't attend train to present or quantum leap or some of these other things. And they'd like to have the option to opt out of that. 
And uh, my reply to them was, you know, if you had attended them, you would see the value in it. So, you know, it's kind of where I'm at. I understand that they kind of feel like they should have that option if they want on that one. The other stuff, you know, I'm not really seeing where there's much movement on anything else. And I know the feedback that I have received is also wanting to know, like, can you have the option to pay for some of the tech things like your own or use your own CRM? And can you have, can the agent have more input in the type of practice or actually select the that's coming into the market? And um, can, can the agents, can you opt to have agents just pay for the training that they want to make? And um, just uh, hang on. Before, sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. Before we keep discussing, I, I do want to address that one specifically. Uh, can agents pick and choose which parts of the technology they use? That we cannot do. Um, it is no matter what, every agent gets access to the entire platform. Um, no matter what, Keller Williams is going to charge us $65 for that. Can someone buy and, buy and use their own CRM? Yes. Um, as long as they are with Keller Williams, will that allow them to uh, will that allow them to just pick and choose what they use or not pay for that technology? No. So as long as you are at Keller Williams, you will be paying. There, there is no option to pick and choose which parts of command, which parts of our technology you do or do not use. Any questions around that? Does that make sense? And honestly, when you're talking about the tech and everything, KW Command is beating out everybody else. We're, we're starting to see people coming in from the XP because they weren't happy with KB Core and some of these other things. And what was the one that just got bought out by follow up boss? Yeah, follow up boss. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. sorry. Yeah. So I mean these other things are getting bought out by uh, basically by our competitors. So if you put all your technology all your contacts into these other other things that are going to be bought by our competitors, then you're going to lose all your all your contacts to that anyway. But you might as well. That was kind of a mute point. Whether we like command or not, it's there. Yeah. This is the feed period. Yeah. And and to Tim's point as well, they're they're not just being bought out by the competitors, they're being bought out by competitors of, in my opinion, real estate agents. Zillow buying these uh buying these things out, buying agents databases essentially is is just putting a lot more power into their hands. Jackie, what did you have something to say? Yeah, um, so I've had a couple of people reach out to me as well, and I just took some quick notes based off of our conversations. Um, and pretty much everyone that I spoke to is on the same page that like whatever Keller Williams is charging, like that's not something we can really change, right? So like that $65 fee is a given. Um, so that wasn't really an issue because I think, I think for that, we just need to show its value. We need to show everyone exactly what they're getting for that $65 um, with that increase. Um, for the E&O insurance, one of the questions that I didn't have the answer to and I said that I would bring up is, could it be an option? And I did some research and $30 is pretty cheap for E&O insurance. Um, but could it be that, um, you know, they could opt in on the E&O monthly insurance through Keller Williams? Um, or could they possibly shop around, get their own E&O with their own deductible and then produce like um, proof of that? You know, like proof of, hey, I have E and O. Here it is. This is what I'm paying. Here's my certificate or something like that. Is that a possibility? Right. I was going to say, tell me if I'm wrong. Now. All right. For a, from a broker in charge perspective, no, because the deal is with the uh, is with the brokerage and not with the agent. So even though they would have to basically be a whole separate entity in order for them okay. to have their own E and O, the contract would have to be written in their name. And all the contracts are actually written to Keller Williams Platinum. Keller Williams. And so that's why you don't have eight, 180 people with 180 different P&O policies. Okay. I didn't know the answer to that, but I thought that was a good question and a good point of, hey, maybe you just get your own with your own deductible, however you felt, um, you know, that worked out for you. And then the other thing that was brought up, that $15 training fee, and I think this is kind of across the board of people asking for the a la carte option. Is there any way, and I know that this would be, you know, a nightmare to, to manage per se, but could we say, okay, you can pay $15 a month and you get the, you know, all-inclusive pass, 
um, or you can pay for class and, you know, like, like a gym, I guess, like you can pay the $10 membership for, you know, unlimited, or you can choose to come in and pay $5 per time or whatever the case is, like, is, is that an option? Um, because then you'd have the two choices of yes, you're all inclusive, you can come to all the classes or no, you're just going to pick and choose and pay for those specific ones that you wanted. And again, I'm just relaying. Um, and then also what was brought up is the $5 um, local tech fee. Like a lot of people suggested that that should just be a market center cost. Like they're not, they don't understand why that's passed to us for like the televisions and the Zoom meetings and all of that. Um, credit card fee was understandable. Um, someone mentioned that maybe, you know, being stricter on office rentals. So like sometimes you walk in and there's random people in offices that they're not paying for. It's just, don't shoot the messenger. Um, and so maybe being really stricter on that might help offset that local tech cost of that $5 a month. So that could come off. Um, and then something too with that KW fee or with that local tech fee or wherever it fits in, um, you know, we currently offer the use of the free cubicles in the conference room you can sign up for and the training room. If it's not being used, you can come in and work in there. Can we take that value and throw that somewhere and say, look, like not only are you getting all this tech stuff, not only does this cover, you know, but look, y'all have a free place to work, free conference room to use. You know, and I know that that's brought up, but I just think that that sometimes slips out as value in that monthly fee. And if that's something that's not important to people, then maybe we could lower that fee, take out that $5 KWP fee or the $15 training fee and make up for that somewhere with cubicle rental, conference room rental or whatever the case may be. Again, just bringing up what was said. Um, and then someone else had brought up, too, uh, that no one's using the anonymous box in the bathroom because I think it was brought up in one of the emails to us about the transparency. People don't know who the ALC members are. They don't know how to get in touch with them. They don't know how to communicate with them. One, um, you know, I, maybe we put QR codes for our contact information underneath the pictures that are above the coffee machine. I know we talked about that in the past. I just don't think it happened. And then also, you know, reiterating at the team meetings, hey, there's an anonymous box in the bathroom. Leave as much feedback as you want. If you have questions, leave it there for the ALC. They'll bring it up. Um, and I think ultimately, too, you know, just just show the value in all of that. And, and if we have to compare it to other brokerages, then that's something we have to do. Because, you know, you do look at those virtual brokerages and they, they they may have lower costs, but they also don't have the office space to use. They don't have all this other stuff. So we really need to take those people that are saying, well, they do it this way or they do it that way and compare the value of what KW offers versus what a cheaper place might offer. Do you get what I'm saying? But that's that's just a combination of people throwing ideas at me. Um, and then somebody else just flat out said, look, you're a real estate agent, you're an entrepreneur, it's a business, it's the cost of doing business. You know, it, it's pretty cheap to run a business with that cost and have all that's included in it. So you've got things coming from both sides, but I'll get off the soapbox. Um, that's just what was kind of expressed to me when I had a discussion with a few of the other agents. Yeah. And, and hang on, I do see, hey, Lisa, I see you raise your hand. I, I just want to uh, go ahead and get out in front. This is the ALC meetings are for ALC participation only. The feedback comes before and after the meeting. So if there's something that you want to um, let us know about, reach out to either leadership or ALC after this um, and, and we'll address that as soon as we're able to. Is that okay? Um, I forgot one thing. Oh, sorry. I forgot. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Me? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, I know in the last meeting, or I don't know which meeting it was, Becky had mentioned that you can actually take a percentage of your commission and put it into a savings to use for like trainings or family reunion or something like that. Um, is that something that may be out of commissions? Maybe we stress more to the agents of, look, if you think that it might be hard for you to pay monthly bills, or it might be hard for you to cover this or that, do you want to take X amount out of your commission and put it in that savings account to use for maybe those low times? Like I know for me, November and December are slow. So if I was the type of person that needed to do that, that might be an idea to say, OK, I always know my November and December's are slow because my kids are always home. So maybe, you know, out of every commission, I take 100 bucks and it goes into that fund. 
to cover my office fees or whatever I needed for those months. That's Thanks. it. Sorry, I'm done. No, you're good. Thank you. Well, feedback. I've got plenty to say, but this is not the Jackson meeting. It's the ALC meeting. What? Edie. Yes. Let's get everybody. Edie, Charlene. Well, I, I wrote down um, prior to this pretty much what Jackie had stated about showing the value of the market center. Are we charging rent for things? Because I don't know how the structure is there and what's charged and whatnot because we have our office here. So um, I think that's a really good idea because I don't, I know it's feeling like they're being nickel and dime to death, but I mean, $20, $20 $25 or $20, it's really not that big of a deal when you look at what you're really getting. Um, so I think showing the value and also be, being transparent because I just pay my fees. I have no idea what I'm paying them for until now that I'm in the ALC. So I think people also want to know you know, being able to break down and seeing it, the breakdown and, and have a transparency of where their money's going. Thanks, Charlie. Um, the only folks that I've talked to are really all about the transparency as to exactly where the money is going, specifically with education um, and whether or not the classes that are being um, paid for by the market center, they feel as though they're getting the value out of that. So my only thought on that is once again, and we've asked several times um, of the folks within the market center, what type of classes do you want? What type of classes are you looking for that they feel as though there's value? And if there's not buy-in as far as participation and, and um suggestions, then I don't know exactly how the market center is supposed to respond to that. Um, the ALC does what we can in order to bring value as far as education. And my, my personal opinion is, is if we go ahead and we help people build bigger businesses, then they don't worry about this as much. So it's it's a matter of helping people be profitable in their business, and then this isn't as much of an issue. Yeah, also to touch on that, like when you're talking about $15 a month for those, what is it, six classes, any one of those classes would pay that $15 a month fee for the year, and then you get the other classes free. So if they're wanting to look at it all a car, choose what classes they want it. I mean, trained presenter, that should almost be a mandatory class for real estate agents. And we know that that class is worth $200. Yeah. Just, just alone. And you're only at $15 a month. That's only $180 for the year. And then the others are just bonuses if you look at it that way. So I, again, value, right? I think it's more of just getting out what the value is that you're getting for that $118.50. And I, I know it's there because between the market center itself, we've got one of the bigger market centers in the area. We've got the best training in the area, hands down. Uh, the stuff that Edie brought in last year and the market center's taken the time to get, the speakers that we've had, it's just been incredible. And anybody that's not coming in and using those things to help grow themselves, of course, they might be the ones complaining. An attachment to last year's <clears throat> ALC, since I was not on it, and I, I do plug myself in, but I was unplugged a lot last year too, is I constantly heard, what do you want? What do you need? What, what can we do to help you? Um, the suggestion box that, you know, I heard about that. So I feel like if somebody has an idea of a training, but maybe they're embarrassed to say there is a suggestion box. So I think that we do, from my perspective and from the people that I've talked to, we are open with the training and what do you want? Because I know everything I've mentioned has either already been on the calendar or it comes. So, yeah. so but we need to continue with that. That's what I'm saying. Is is because obviously somebody said something that they didn't feel like they they had a, a word or like to have a word. Mm -hmm. So I think we just continue with that. But last year I felt like the ALC did. Yeah, and I 100% agree. Uh, and, and I think going going back to what we heard from that is that. There's there's a level of vocality that we we need to make sure everyone understands they have that power that are and I, I I hope that this will be a testament to that that 
when you when you speak up, when you tell us what you want, we will do everything we can to get that into. I know um, one agent uh, one agent recently said that we should do like an um, interior design type class. Um, we should have someone in here to teach cabinets to teach that kind of thing. So I mean that those are the kind of things that when you speak up, we we put that kind of thing into motion. Um, and maybe we just need to ensure that that message is out there. And I, I do want to say also, I think a lot of it is the way we communicate as well and really being open to receiving feedback um, and avoiding words like complaining. Because I know the individuals that I talked to that gave me feedback truly wanted to understand. Um, they just wanted more information. They wanted more transparency and communication. And I don't feel like they were complaining. Um, I just feel like it was a lot that they just don't really truly understand. And I think it's just a matter of just really making sure we're communicating. I feel like we we have done a great job um, of communicating, but at some point, obviously, for some people, it's, it hasn't been communicated to their standards. And I, I don't, I think we really need to be careful about um, just don't brush it off as complaining. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Marcia. Yeah, our words matter. Thank you. Along hey, Jackson. Line, I'm sorry, Edie. Uh, that's okay. Go ahead. I was just going to say, um, you know, with the ALC meetings, they are open for anyone to come on to Zoom. I mean, they're on the, the Keller Williams Platinum calendar, you know, so maybe we just need to make sure that everyone knows that, hey, you're invited to listen in. Again, you just can't participate. So then that way people can come in and listen to what's going on and what's being communicated and what's being talked about and, you know, be able to be in the know, just like, like you said, not be able to participate. Yeah, I agree. And that's, I, I would imagine a lot of people don't know that they can come in and participate. That's, we've got to make sure we're communicating that. Edie? I was just going to say the same thing. I think it's communication and I don't know exactly how else we can go about making it um, more well known. The things that the, that are offered from the market center that are part of their value that that will give them a return on investment if they actually participate and take take part in it. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I open it up for conversation at, on another time, but how exactly do, it, it's, it's the ongoing problem of how do we get people to actually take part in the things that we offer that are going to help them grow their business and help them realize that it's actually going to help them. Um, and I think it comes down again to communication that people need to hear from others that this has helped me build my business and hopefully they'll come on board and help build their business. I'm hearing that a lot is communication. Um, that, well, two things that I've heard a lot so far is that A, growing a business, uh, making sure that people are making money in here and making sure that the classes that they're coming to, they are being intentional about putting things into place such that they will grow their business and communication. Um, it sounds like those are two those are two key areas that we need to make sure that we focus on no matter what as we move forward. Um, and then I, I want to address, uh, though I, I was just writing things down as we go. Um, I want to address what it seems as though is one of our biggest, uh, one of the things that we should be discussing, which is like a training opt-in, a training opt-in or opt-out program. Um, with this $15 fee being um, something that helps us pay for these big instructors. So for, for full transparency, a class like Trainer Presenter. Um, we, of course, we, we have a great ability almost all in part to our $15 monthly fee to bring classes like that in. Uh, when we bring classes, when we bring people like Kent Temple to teach those classes, those are thousands of dollars that we pay to make sure. Because of our training fee, we are able to have, we are able to do those for free. Um, an opt-in, I know uh, you let people in there. Um,
We just lost sound. Or I lost sound. I did too. We couldn't hear the yeah, last couple of sentences Jackson said. Yeah, we couldn't hear anything. Start again. No, they they just said they could hear you. Oh, okay. You're back now. All right. Okay. Um, what was that? But uh, uh, so so this opt-in program, it would of course it would make it such that um, let's close it. Um, it would make it such that agents who did participate would have to pay. Yes, most likely fifty, a hundred, one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, of course, mid top. Um, now, when we talk about a tracking nightmare, yes, that that would be a tracking nightmare. Um, the way that we have uh, now systems can be developed for this kind of thing, and the way that we have our setups now is you you sign up either RSVP on Facebook, you RSVP on Google, you RSVP on an invite. There would essentially have to be two different events, one for people who weren't paying the monthly fee, one for people who were. Um, now, we would have to be scrubbing our list of, and I'm not, I'm not trying to just put this market center problem on the agents. I just want you to know what that would look like. Um, we would have to scrub our list monthly because with an opt-in or opt-out program, I would imagine, well, I guess you'd probably have to, um, let's discuss this, it would just be an opt-in. You say, I'm opting in for the year or out for the year. What do you think, Brian? You're either in or out. Yeah. We, we can't. We don't have a system right now, and there's nothing that would make this easy. It would just put more work on the MCA. And so you either pay the 15 or you don't. I think it's it, the ALC today just needs to vote on that. It's either... You're, you're paying for the $15 and you're in, because again, like Tim said, it's a hundred and some dollars for the year. I mean, as you mentioned, Tim, that that class, like with Kent Temple, when he comes in, that's $3,500 for you to teach that two day class. If you had to pay for it, it's $175 per person, all right, before paying for anything else. Um, some of these other classes that we do, like uh, Gene Rivers, he's actually probably closer to five or six thousand dollars to have him come in and teach that class. Now, granted, that's one of the reasons why we share it with the other market centers. And I know the other market centers, they do charge. Yeah. They do charge for that class. They charge like a hundred dollars or hundred and fifty dollars per person. We don't. And so again, to Edie's point, and I think to anybody else who talked about it, if, if you haven't come in for a class, then yeah, you know what? It, I would want to get rid of the $15 too. But the, the, the thing is, is all you got to do is show up for one and you pay for your thing for the whole year. And number two, if you took one thing from that class and went out and got one deal because of that, that actually, that return on investment for $200, you're going to get a $10,000 gross commission income check. Where else can you get that kind of return? Now, I'm going to get probably real for a second here. If you're going to hide at home your couch cushion, cushions, then yeah, you know what? $15 is $15. You, you've got to participate. And that's, I think, the Edie's point. We, we've asked, what do you want Edie ran a committee last year asking, what do you want? And it really disturbs me, to be honest with you, to have people coming back and going, we, do we get a choice in this? That, that, that does bother me, I'll be honest. But in the end, to, to the point here, I think what we end up with, whether we increase it by $20 and we try to save the $20, it sounds like this is the one that the people want cut. And so you're either in or out. That's the way it's going to be, and I, I don't think we can do an opt-in or an opt-out because it's not fair then either to other people. You know, as they come on, we're going to have to ask people, "Do you want to opt-in or opt-out?" They don't know what they're saying yes to or no to, and I'm I'm okay either way. As the OP, I, I I'm I'm okay. If you want to spend your money to pay for classes, then and of course, if you're not coming to classes, it ain't going to cost you nothing. But for those that do come to a class. You know, those, it, it, it's going to cost you. That That's just how it is. I don't know how else to say it. The $5 tech fee, I think we didn't mention something there, is one of the other things that KWRI did. 
um, is that the Google suite that you have, if you're using it or not, that's again, your choice, but they make us pay for that now. So it's currently, I think we pay 70% of it. So currently monthly, we're paying about $700 a month uh, to pay for the Google suite type stuff. And that was voted on by the OPs because they were to cut it out completely and we weren't going to get access to it anymore. But uh, the OPs at that time thought uh, it was important that people had access to that. And so we decided to pick that up. And that's where that local tech fee that we've been using to pay for, like this Zoom thing that we have here. This is five grand worth of stuff that we've got in here. Now, you, I understand you want the market center to pick it up, but everybody gets a chance to use it, though. You know, when we're doing our buyer seminars or we're doing things along those lines, we're doing something else and we're using the TVs and we're using the other things that are in here. Everybody gets the opportunity to use that stuff. Now, again, it's whether or not you're taking advantage of it. So that's where that $5 was going to. You know, $5 to pay for Becky's computer, which processes your check. I mean, I can have that conversation with everybody as to where that money goes. And to your point, yeah, you know what? Uh, it's in your independent contractor's agreement. All this breakdown is there. Everybody got it when they signed on. Now, should we have done it more often? Yes. Yeah, I can I can see that as well. And again, open book company, you're more than welcome to come and ask these questions at any time. And we'll be more than happy to share these things with you. You know, so uh, the market center makes 1%, 1%, whereas an agent should be making 40%. So that's why, again, there's a pass through here. That's all we're doing is we're passing this through. We're not making any money on this at all. So, you know, I think what we need to do is, is you know, have that vote on this on how we want to do, are we going to raise it, are we not going to raise it, you know, and, and then go from there because otherwise we'll just go round and round here. And some people are going to be happy and some people aren't. And I think we all understand that and that's okay. That's okay. Charlene. I think that we need to keep in mind that the one thing that sets us apart is our training from like other firms and whatnot. So I don't, in my opinion, giving them an option to opt in or opt out, it just kind of defeats what we do and, and what our, our mission and our vision is. So, I mean, we've, we've got some of the best training, we've got the best real estate training in the world. So I don't know why we would, for $15, we would make that an option, but also the what we're getting for the $20 difference just in the tech fee, I mean, there's a cost with it, with the new smart plans and the AI campaigns and the connect, the heat seekers. Those are all really amazing tools that are going to make a lot of, give a lot of opportunities for agents to make money and build wealth. So if we're using the tools properly, and that $20 isn't that big of a deal. Um, but also I know there's new agents and it just seems like it. there's, constantly you know things are being add-on and each year there's gonna be add-ons there's inflation things cost more I understand that so but I just feel like take making the training an option um I just think having it out there um and us educating and promoting and showing the value of it to to agents is more important than taking it away in my yeah. opinion <clears throat> thank you Edie because um, when you go ahead and you look at the increase in the um, technical fee, has anybody gone through and actually shown a comparison? It, because it is a cost of doing business. No matter how you're doing business, a, a CRM, having a database of any sort, unless you're doing it on index cards and going old school, is going to cost money. So have we done any type of an actual comparison between this is what you're going to go if you go a la carte and you go out on your own, or this is what you're going to go ahead and do here. Yes. So that that's um, part of like what we emailed out, part of what we posted to Facebook was that feature comparison. Um, so yes, you're absolutely right. We've gone out, we've done that research and shown that um, command is the cheapest and provides the most, um, the most features, especially the key ones that real estate agents need. Um, it's, uh, I think, uh, this goes along to that sharing the story of it. 
making and sure. that was sent out to everyone though yes correct thanks that's what i was wondering yeah well so it sounds like opt-in is we are opting out of the opt-in or opt-out program when it, yes well, what i was going to say is even if we have the resources in-house to be able to keep up with opting in and opting out i think we're a team and we all do it one way or the other yeah. Yeah. I'd like to keep it all the same only because we have so much and I think the lack of knowledge, not knowing exactly what, what we actually have, what this as a business owner paying 118 a month is nothing as a business owner. But if individuals don't know what they're getting, yes, that's a lot of money. Um paying out if you don't know what you're getting. So I'm thinking if anyone on the call or on the Zoom or here in person really still don't quite understand what it's all about, please come to one of the ALC leaders um, and, and let us help, help you understand what this cost entails. Dividing stuff up, like you just said, Wendy, um, I, I think we should be a team, one group. We all opt in because going to these classes are going to help grow you as an individual, as well as your business. And if you're not getting, if your business is not growing, then this $118 or whatever, is going to be a challenge. But if you want your business to grow, come on in and let us help you grow your business. Pull somebody by the coattail say, hey, I need some help. I need some help paying these fees. So I need some help getting business. Allow us to, to direct you in the right direction to do that. But again, I still believe KW is a great place to be. Um, it's a choice for us all, but we have to show up. We have to come in and show up. These classes, I personally don't want to have to pay a large sum. It goes back to taking money out of commission. So this $15 being paid every month, we're not worried. When this class come up, we just we will go. And that too will grow our business. So if again, if anyone not certain what this is all about, even after this meeting, please pull one of us by the hotel. Let us let's sit down and have a conversation. And also, I keep hearing communication, communication. Prior to Nicole, that was an issue, but now that Nicole is here, we got to remember that we have to start somewhere, and we have started. So the communication, now we probably get more than enough communication. So the communication has started and it's going to be big. And all of us on Zoom and in this room, we're feeling like, okay, I don't know enough or I'm still missing something. We have to two share with one another. Let the next person, you sit down in a break room with someone somewhere, share with the other person what's coming up or what's going on. I miss stuff, you know, as well, just because I wasn't on Facebook. But now I can't miss anything. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> but share, we have to open, we're family. Let's share what's going on around. Let's share the good with the bad. Yeah. And I, you know, it's a lot of good stuff going on here. And that comparison sheet tells us that we got it going on here. So let's let's just get together and help each other grow this our business individually so that this won't be an issue come the next go out. Thank you, Frida. Thank you. That fired me up. When I, when I look at, at the people that are coming into the market center on the daily, I also look, those are the same people that are attending these training classes that we're talking about. And when I look at the amount of business those people are doing, it, it's probably more than the average agent. So it, it does pay to go to those classes. It does pay to come to this market center. And, and again, for you to just to piggyback on you, if that's the cost of doing business, where else can you go and get this kind of square footage for $118 a month? Because I'd be the first one to sign up. That's without having the command and all the CRM that goes with that, that other agencies don't have and ain't gonna have. So. Yeah, to piggyback on that, like I said, I'm at my grandparents' house. My grandfather has owned his own firm for 55 years, and I just had a little conversation with him before this meeting. And he's like, you get that and that and that and that and that all for just a hundred and some dollars a month. And after $18,000 cap, you get 100% commission. He's like, I would have signed up for that a long time ago because owning your own firm, you're taking on all that stuff. 
and it's a lot. So like this is a really, really good deal, especially with the Keller Williams attitude of it's your business. You're an entrepreneur. You're not just this real estate agent that's here. So the value in that alone is is phenomenal and tremendous. And I just I think we need more people to kind of see it on that aspect, like Edie was saying and like Frida was saying and like Tim was saying, like we are the best around and that's just how it is. And you get all of this stuff for this small amount of money, which to some, it doesn't seem like a small amount of money, especially new agents when you're throwing money out for signs and MLS fees and association fees and all of that. But again, are you in this to grow a business and be a business owner? Or are you in this to play real estate agent? Like, where are you? Because that's what's really going to separate those people who are serious about this and want to be a real estate agent and own a business or are just going to play it because they hear that they make a lot of money. You know, so you've got to really find out where you stand personally before we can start nickel and a diamond and, and, you know, picking out different pieces that we don't like. Not to mention that there's no fee associated with if we want to do an open house or uh, an event in the parking lot or something like this. You know, anytime you do an event outside, a lot of places you got to get an additional insurance rider on top of that, and you got to cover that cover yourself. Not just you know, it's something we're able to piggyback onto to the firm instead of having to go out and get that ourselves. And and if you're not using these tools, because that's all it is, a conference room is a tool. If you're using it for a home buyer seminar our first time seller seminar, any of these things that you're using. And we're seeing the, the people that are doing these things consistently are consistently performing at the top. So those that aren't, you know, let's look around and, and join in. You know, you all you gotta do is raise your hand and any of the people, that's the other thing about this place. You got to fire it up for you. <laughs> but anybody here that consistently produces, all you gotta do is raise your hand and they will help you in any way, shape or form. And that outweighs any any type of fee that we're talking about today. I just want to bring up one concern because I, I definitely think we should can't do the opt in or, or opt out. I think we just have to say what it's going to be. But one of my concerns is with the um, I know some of the folks are looking at wanting to um, considering how it will work a la carte with the training. But a huge concern is I actually think it will cause even a more hardship on people, um, you know, thinking, okay, this is the class I want to choose. But when it comes time, if you haven't been doing business, then you got to come up with a significant amount of money um, to be able to take that class. And I think it's going to cause people then to actually not take the class because now you got to pay more money. Absolutely. That's a good point. Well, we don't want to give them another reason for that, Marcia, mm -hmm. right? Because they... The classes that were offered here weren't full. Yeah. And the and the people that did attend benefited greatly from it. So, but it, it, I, I don't understand why people don't show up for these classes when the results are, are there that it works. But, I guess, I'd like to just, is, how do we help them see the value of, I, I think that's what we're lacking is people want to see value. So whether it's value of what they're spending per month and what they're spending it on, what value does training give them? Obviously, if they haven't done any training, um, they're not getting value. But figuring out ways is to um, allow them to see the value. I don't know how we do that as a market center, but I, I really think that's what people want to see. Well, Charlie, that, that'll be a that'll be a campaign we'll have to go on. Uh, I think uh, as we when we were, I'll move us to to make a vote and after it. Because I do think, you know, this is not everyone is in here. Uh, everyone's on Zoom. We're going to post this recording to our Facebook and I would hope to our YouTube. Still, not everyone will tune into that. Um, so so we're going to have to really go on a campaign of making sure that people know what's out there, know what we have, and, and essentially get to hear what our ALC um, said today. Because this this stuff was powerful. And yet, like, like I said, not everyone got to hear it. Um, so if everyone is prepared, I... Uh, I'm going to move us to oh, Brian. Just the one thing I know we, we discussed this before. We can again we can break out the E and O, and I will say this that if we broke it out so that we have to pay for it like once a year, I don't recommend that we do it in January because a lot of dues are due at that time. I think we do it in like the middle of the year, probably June or July. But then um, uh, you know thirty dollars a month times twelve is three sixty. What I would probably be able to do 
is take that down to twenty dollars a month, and everybody pay two forty. So there would be a ten dollar, and again, you'd have a ten dollar savings, but then you'd have to pay it in one bill once a month or one time a year. Yeah. We take it off and do it then because then we need to get paid. That that's an option. Yeah. And so I just want to put that out there. Thank that it's there. I see that everybody kind of shaking their head. Well, I mean, yeah, that, no, thank you. That we, we need to get all the options out there. I'm just seeing that that entire thing where you go ahead and break it down. I, I understand and I appreciate the fact that you're trying to to juggle the numbers in order to help people out. But just like we were saying a moment ago of when you have a train the trainer or you have a, a, a good class like the investment class that we had with Gene Rivers, where you're asking somebody to go ahead and put up a hundred dollars to go to it one time a year, it's going to be the same thing there. They're not going to be able to come up with it then just for the class. They're not going to be able to come up for the ENO one time a year. It, it, it's just like the whole layaway thing for Christmas from the old days. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, you got to go ahead and, and chunk it out and little by little. And then it's just taken care of because if they're having, if the person is having trouble making a profitable business, it's going to be all throughout the year. It's not going to be one time seasonal. Like the average real estate agent, there were 11,500 agents in the triangle last year and that um, if you went ahead and out of those 11,500 agents and you sold more than 20 homes, you were in the top 10% of the triangle. There were 11,500 agents and the average sold six homes a year. So even at six homes as average, so how many of them are selling zero? Okay. If you have 20 homes or more a year as the top 10% and six as the average, how many are selling zero? So if, if we're fighting, if, if not fighting, if we're arguing over $100 a month, those folks that aren't building a profitable business are never going to have the hundred dollars a month. Yeah. So, so adding on to, to that campaign that we talked about is not only what we have, but how you show up and get business. The other problem with doing the ENO a bulk payment per year, I guarantee you the time that I switch my credit card over and get a new credit card and forget to give it to Becky, that'll be when that's due. And that's when I will need that ENO. So, yeah, we build it. That's my vote. All right, so are, you, are we then prepared to move to a vote? So from from what I hear, um, it sounds like the, what bad timing on this guy. <laughs> 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 um, sorry, everyone on Zoom, we, the uh, guy who's leaf blowing. Okay, we got it, we got a moment. So from what I'm hearing, uh, our vote is whether or not to um, increase the monthly fee to $118.50 uh, by then essentially taking that monthly fee up to 65, making the market center fee $118.50 per month. Who would like to, uh, we're gonna do one by one votes, um, yay or nay? Motion for vote. You gotta have a motion. You know, I have to help oh, you know, my motion to make a vote on the monthly fee increase. I second it. All right, so we got Marsha. You got to write this down. I got you. I'm recording. Oh, okay. And when, when will I take it back? Basically, immediately. Yeah. So we'll see February. February. Oh, crap. Cool. Yeah, they moved it up on us like a by a month. It's supposed to be March. It's supposed to be March 1st. And then they moved it up on us, what, two weeks ago? More or less. Yeah. So for that, we definitely have all that. So Marsha motion, Wendy second. Tim, would you like to start us off? Yes, I would like to start us off. Tim, what do you vote? Yes. We're definitely going to do it. 
Wendy? Yeah. Marcia? Yeah. Charlene? Just give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Charlene, thumbs up or thumbs down, yay or nay? We can't hear you. Sorry, can you she hear took me? her purse. I had to switch it over to my phone because my audio went out. And my yes to what was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yes to increasing the fee to one hundred eighteen dollars and fifty cents per month. Yes. Edie. Yes. And Jackie. Yes. All right, so with a unanimous vote, then we will be raising it to $118.50 per month um, moving forward. Brian, anything we need to do to close out the vote? Uh, no, just what you did is fine. Perfect. Um, all right, then any other points of discussion before we end today's ALC meeting? I, I From the concern that I got that I'd asked to bring some feedback to yes. is... Some people had felt like some of the increases is, oh, by the way, next month it's increases. By the Absolutely. way, next month it increases. And now this is the fourth time. And I understand that concern. Absolutely. And so I would like to make it acknowledged that this one we don't have a choice in, right? We don't know. But just we come up with a way of other increases that we can control that are announced with the timing now. Yeah. And not just January 1st, February 1st, sure. Yeah. And that, that, I, that I was believe, the big thing that was brought to me. I believe the last two have been from Keller Williams. You you wanted to say something? Yeah. Uh, they've been now having stakeholder meetings in which the old piece all get there. And um, I'm just going to put that up, put this out there. I think we've actually been talking about this one since November. Now, again, the question is, is whether or not people are engaging. Now, I know we, now here's the thing. I'm going to say this though, too. Make sure that, that I don't get uh, put up on, or I don't get rocks thrown at me when I go to my car. Uh, originally, I think it was just brought up in a team meeting. And then I think we brought it up at an ALC meeting. And then it kind of was table. It was brought up there. And we brought it up again in, in team meeting. And then we did get it out to the masses by email and through Facebook. So um, this is. This is your market center. And I think to Tim and to uh, previous point here, you, you gotta put your arms around it and you have to get involved. We want you to be involved. And uh, I, I saw this, you know, this email here where it says that uh, complaining, I'm not for sure where that came from and why that was put out or how that was put out. And I, we've never looked at it as complaining. I know I never have, I know Jackson has it. And I apologize if that has ever felt that way because it never should. And again, you have to get involved. It's like anything, right? Because here's what happens just, just for transparency is when Becky goes to put out the, the bill, all of a sudden she gets 25 or 30 phone calls going, I'll put my bill on. We, we've been talking about this. Now, whether or not you paid attention to the emails that Nicole is sending out, or you looked at the Facebook post, or the text message, or whatever it is, I, I don't know what else to do, to be honest with you. I look for people's feedback and help on that, because other than just going to everybody's door, knocking on it, and having a face-to-face -face conversation with people, I don't know how else to get the, I mean, maybe a letter. I guess we can send a letter out at this point to let you know that it, it's going to increase. And we're just always kind of shocked ourselves at how many people, when the bill goes out, goes, oh my God, how did I not know about this? Let me know, how, how can I communicate with you? How can we as a market center communicate with you? We don't want to hear that. Like, Wendy, I don't want you to hear that. I don't want the ALC members to hear that. That is never our goal is to try to you know, sneak past you or to get this through in the middle of the night. Oh, yeah, that was not said. They just, you know. But I, 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 I understand that they did. I'm just, you know, voicing my, because this is, again, this is your market center. We're just here to facilitate. 
as a as a leadership group. Yeah, I, I guess I well, I think. Go ahead. Sorry, Marsha. A suggestion. So when it comes to maybe like financial things, because it is with dealing with people's money when we stand it out, is there any way that we can like require um, acknowledgement that people receive it and that they know the duties of one people? Or is that too much work? I would say the the closest we could get to that would be breaking down our roster throughout the entire ALC and our entire ALC making phone calls to each and every person on our roster. I think that if they if you mail a letter to them at their the address mm -hmm. you use with the North Carolina Real Estate Commission, because that's why we have to maintain that home address, mm -hmm. that, that should serve good enough notice because they're not going to answer our phone calls. And I, well, I, I think too, like it, it, it again comes down to personal responsibility, y'all. Like we have two team meetings a month that mm -hmm. everyone is invited to, and it's pretty set in stone when they happen. Um, you know, we can put out there for anybody that didn't know, we have this ALC meeting once a month that they're welcome to jump in on, not participate, but jump in on. And like you said, texts go out, emails go out, Facebook goes out. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that things are communicated. So if you're not showing up to the team meetings and you're saying, I didn't know about something that falls on you. Like, I mean, they're twice a month, every month. And that's why they're there, right. Is to get out information. So again, we're business owners, we're entrepreneurs, we're adults. We need to be responsible for ourselves. And sometimes notice comes out late. Look at what, um, what MLS did to us, what the realtors association did to us this year. They dramatically increased our monthly dues, what, a month before that and said, if you don't pay it by January 1st, you know, you're going to lose access to MLS. And we had to do it because it was cost of doing business or we no longer could do business. So zoom in to the meetings, come to the meetings like that's how you're going to find out about this stuff or or and I hate to say it like this, but like Brian said, like stop complaining about it when it's put out there. Like what else can be done? Meetings are recorded, right? Yeah. Team meeting, so we can go back. We are business owners. We got to stop. That. Yeah, well, and they're streamed on on Facebook and they're streamed on Zoom. So, like, how else can can you be more transparent? How else can you put more information out there when you are literally touching everything? You know, there's a calendar, there's text, there's emails, there's Facebook. There's so many different outlets. Like, be a part of it. That's going to be another expense if someone had to take the time, mail out letters and postage the whole nine yards. And I cannot mail that home. So. <laughs> then that $5 technology fee is going to have to go up to $10 to pay for postage and printing and everything else. That'll be a whole nother ball game. <laughs> All right, so we are going to uh, we're, we'll make sure that on the on the air of communication, we'll make sure that not only do we get this recording out to the entire agent base. Now we can't email something like that out. So make sure that everyone share share your knowledge of it. Let everyone know, hey, go check it out on Facebook as soon as we're able to get it out. We will share what the decision was made out to all of the agents to make sure. And so that we are we are all clear. Let's make sure that we know we did vote for it to go to one eighteen fifty. When you get messages. Let them know exactly what went on here. Uh, let them know if they have more questions um, and and you you don't have an answer to it. Come to leadership. We'll be here. Um, I do want to be respectful of y'all's time. It is three oh three. Does someone want to motion to end this ALC meeting? I've got one other thing that I need to bring up before we before we leave. Okay. Um, so one of the agents they they used the TC and when uh, they asked Becky about hey. Uh, who sends out the 1099 for the TC? She said that the agents do. I just want to, they wanted to know if, if I could ask you guys for some type of clarification on that, considering they never touched the money, never saw the money. They don't have a 1099 on that person, that it was all done through the through the market center. I have no answer for that. I didn't know if that was the ALC thing or if that's something you guys could talk through. I've never received one. No, no, you don't receive one. Okay. The TC does. Because to your point, we're paying them. I thought we would have, my guess would have been we would 1099 that. Right. Well, yeah. It seems like every day you go we'll have a conversation and figure it out. And then we'll get back to you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go to motion to adjourn this meeting. No second. I'll say I it. second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you all. Thank you all so much. Thank um, you. Really great. Really great.